now we're in lifestyle management and we're doing chapter five, personal nutrition. And as you probably are aware that eating well helps us live and feel well. And it fuels us to perform better in the challenges that we choose to make in our lives, whether that's physical activity or other hobbies, or in certainly including our academic experience. Many college and university students are concerned about weight gain it's known as the freshman 15, meaning a 15 pound gain in your freshman year. And healthy eating represents one of the important means of facing the challenges head on. Insight into the new Canada's Food Guide will enable you to have the most recent information on nutrition guidelines in Canada. Now I'm going to post that in your um, week three folder, okay? Now, in the part two, we're going to review looking at nutritional labels and can guide your food choices that way. But in this one, we're going to basically look at is what are the essential parts of our diet and how do we follow the Canada's Food Guide as being the beginning part of this part one. So let's begin uh, exploring these topics. So what do you need to know about nutrients? Well, every day, our body needs six essential nutrients that it can't manufacture on its own. So if it can't manufacture stuff on its own, that means we are contributing to what goes into our body, helps us meet our body's requirements. Now these six essential nutrients are water, protein, carbohydrates, fats, minerals, and vitamins. Now you might have noted that I mentioned fats. If fats is essential, we'll see that in fact that it is. Water makes up about 60% of the body and it's essential for health and survival. Now, we, we need energy to live and we need the energy to receive, uh, we need to receive our energy from the carbohydrates, proteins and fats and the foods that we eat. Now, it's based on what we eat is how much of these do we get and not getting the proper amounts or too much of others can really offset our health. These three essential nutrients are called macronutrients. So that's carbohydrates, protein, and fat. These are macronutrients because they are the nutrients required by our body in the greatest amounts. Macronutrients, we measure these by the term that you're familiar with, calories. Now the other two essential uh, nutrients, vitamins and minerals, well, they're called micronutrients, and guess what? Because our body needs far fewer of them, in smaller amounts at least, that's why they're micronutrients. An individual's need for macronutrients nutrients depends on how much energy he or she is expending. So let's look at what these needs uh, for food are in our bodies. We're going to begin with, begin with water. And water, as mentioned earlier, 6% of our body is made up of water. But are you aware that water makes up 85% of our blood, 70% of our muscles, and 75% of our brain? Water performs an essential function. And what's really important when you think in terms of water in your brain, you've probably seen images of brains. And they sit there on a plate or on a table, and they hold their shape. But that's not a fresh brain. That's a um, preserved brain. If you were to pop a brain, pop your brain out and drop it on the floor, it would splatter like pudding. 75% of your brain is water. It's why when you go out drinking at night, you drink a little too much and in the morning you have a headache. The headache is your brain telling you, I'm short on water. Sure, you took a lot of alcohol in, but alcohol is a diuretic. It pushes the water out pretty quickly. That's why you pee as much as you do. But in the morning, when your body's low, low, low on water, you get a headache. Your body's brain, your brain is saying, fill me with some water. Now, water carries nutrients. It maintains temperature. Uh, it lubricates joints, helps uh, with our digestion, rids the body of waste through urine, and contributes to the production of sweat, which, when it evaporates from our skin, cools our body. We lose about two to two and a half liters of water a day through perspiration, urination, bowel movements, and normal exhalation. So just when you, against the mirror or a window, you see condensation, 
there's water leaving the body. To ensure adequate water intake, women should be drinking a minimum of 2.2 liters of water and men should be drinking a minimum of 3 liters of water a day. As you know, we can, we can survive a while without food. We cannot survive very long, only a few days without water. So calories, as mentioned earlier, this is the measure of the amount of energy that can be derived from food. How many calories you need depends on your sex, your age, your body frame size, weight, height, percentage of body fat, basal metabolic rate, or your BMR, and activity level. Health Canada suggests that we also calculate the amount of calories that we need by our activity level. So whether we're sedentary, moderate, or high energy level. Okay, now protein. Now protein, this is a form, um, this proteins form the basic framework of our muscle, bones, blood, hair, and fingerprints. If you're doing any augmentative work in the course of your day through exercise, protein is an important basic element to build strong muscles and bones. Complete proteins, and I'm going to bring up this in a minute, animal proteins, meat, fish, poultry, dairy products, these provide the eight essential amino acids. Now I mentioned complete because there are also incomplete and what you're trying to do, if particularly you're um, vegetarian or vegan, is try to find the matching paired amino acids in foods that when paired together they create a complete protein. Now grains, beans and nuts are incomplete proteins so by matching these up and by complementing them they create a full protein. And they, now their grains and dried beans and nuts, they're incomplete proteins and they may have relatively low levels of one or two essential amino acids but they may have fairly high levels of others. Combining these incomplete proteins ensures that the body gets sufficient amounts of what is sometimes called complementary proteins. And so there are quite a few, surprisingly, vegan or um, um, vegetarian elite athletes and they spend a lot of time making sure they're getting complementary and full proteins by matching. Now based on the latest data, the recommended level of protein intake for adults is 0.8 grams per kilogram of body weight. So take your weight in kilograms, multiply it by 0.8 will give you the amount of carbohydrate, sorry, of proteins you should be taking in on a daily basis. Now carbohydrates, these are organic compounds that provide our brain and our bodies with glucose. Now glucose is a form of sugar. Um, uh, and that's the basic fuel that our body uses. Carbohydrates are classified according to the number and type of simple sugar units present. So monosaccharides, mono, simple sugar, one simple sugar unit, mono, one. Di disaccharides, these contain two sugars and they're linked with a chemical bond. And then there is polysaccharides. These are complex carbohydrates. They contain more than 10 units of sugar Fiber and starches are also classified as complex carbohydrates. So you might be thinking on the one hand, well, simple sugars, that should mean it's simple, it's easy for our body. But in fact, more complex carbohydrates are more desirable. The current recommendations are that children and adults consume at least 135 to 180 grams of digestive carbohydrates per day. So let's look at this. Simple carbohydrates, these include natural sugars that are in milk and fruits, lactose and fructose, and it also includes the um, added sugars that you find in candies, soft drinks, and pastries. So there's your hint that simple carbohydrates are not as good for us because they are manufactured and they're not easy for our bodies to break down and use. Now complex carbohydrates, these are the foundation of healthy diets and they include grains, cereals, now not breakfast cereals per se, um, they fall within the same uh, group as grains and cereals, it would be um, not like frosted flakes and ch chocolates and stuff like that. Uh, vegetables, beans and nuts, several health organizations have recommended that Canadians increase the consumption of whole grain foods. And so that really gives our body the kinds of glucose that it needs to turn into fuel that allows us to use it to run and fuel our body for the activities that we're going to do. 
fiber, which includes dietary fiber, functional fiber, to create what's known as total fiber. The recommended daily intake of total fiber is 38 grams for men, 25 grams for women. Now, after you get older, like over 50, that drops to 30 for men and 21 for women. Now, the glycemic index, the GI, is a measurement of how much carbohydrate-containing food is likely to raise your blood sugar. Now, studies have found that low glycemic index foods have health benefits such as the prevention of type 2 diabetes, and control of blood sugar levels, and the control of blood cholesterol levels. Now, those are all three very important things because they've probably heard of them before. Lowering blood cholesterol is good for us, lowering our blood sugar is good for us, and avoiding type 2 diabetes. These are things that we can control, and that's a good thing. Excuse me. So now let's look at fats. Now fats is a bit of a misnomer. Fats in and of themselves aren't all bad, but there are different types of fat, like there are different types of carbohydrates. So let's look. Fat carries fat-soluble vegetable, vegetable. <laughs> fat carries fat-soluble vitamins, A, D, and E, and K, and it aids in the absorption of the foods into our intestine. It protects organs from injury, regulates body temperature, and plays an important role in growth and development. And as I mentioned, there's more than one form of fat. There's saturated fats. Now these are fats which are car which carbon atoms are saturated with hydrogen atoms. Animal fats are saturated fats that are usually solid at room temperature. Any fat that's soluble at room temperature is considered a saturated fat. If you've ever seen a, a, a wad or a ball of lard, it's malleable kind of well, material, but it's fat and it's solid at room temperature. You can heat it up and it goes liquid, but at room temperature it's solid. Cholesterol is a form of fat that's manufactured by our bodies that circulates in the blood. Cholesterol is made up of high density uh, lipoproteins, HDLs, low density lipoproteins, LDLs, and very low density lipoproteins, VLDLs. Now unsaturated fats, these are fats that have more than one double bonded saturated carbon in the molecule and are likely to be liquid at room temperature. And then there's omega-3 acids in deep water fish like salmon and are unsaturated and may help lower the risk of cardiovascular disease. And then lastly, there's a process called hydrogenation. And you'll find this in some products that you might purchase, uh, where it creates, hydrogenation creates unsaturated fatty acids called trans fatty acids. Now this is, um, I should be emphasizing this, there is no safe level of trans fatty acids which occur naturally in meats as well as in foods prepared with partially hydrogenated vegetable oils. Watch for that in labels. Now how much fat is okay? Well there are levels of okay amounts of fat. The recommended range for fat intake is 25 to 35 percent of the total calories that you take in. Now that 25 and 35 percent is based on a 2,000 uh, calorie intake. Now, 2,000 is not too low and it's not too high. Try to keep fat calories from saturated fat and trans fat below 10% a daily intake. Now when people are, um, eat very low levels of fat and very high levels of carbohydrates, their levels of high density lipoproteins, HDLs, declines and that's good and it's healthy. So let's look at eating for good health. Health Canada suggests that you follow eating well with Canada's, Can uh, Canada's food guide. There are several translated versions of the food guide available on the web address that I've got on the screen behind me. So what I want you to do is check in week three. I've got a Canada's food guide posted there for you and in it we'll look at what we're going to talk about now. So for example, what is a serving size? How, you know, what is the portions that we're supposed to eat and what are the type of foods we're supposed to eat? The food guide has two parts to it. There's the rainbow side, which places food into four categories. The grain products, vegetables and fruits, milk and alternatives, and meat and alternatives. While the bar side 
it helps you decide how much you need to eat from every from each group. Now it's worthwhile noting the rainbow side looks at grains, bread, uh, vegetables and fruits, milk and milk alternatives, and meat and meat alternatives. If you go to a grocery store, you don't have to go down the middle aisles for almost anything except for maybe 10% of the food, you know, some salt maybe, uh, some ketchup, some mustard, you know, some... Uh, the food groups are on the outside perimeter of the entire grocery store. Grains, breads, fruits, vegetables, meats, meat alternatives, and milks. You can get all the Canada Food Guide that are going on the outside fringe of all grocery stores. The food guide also gives us advice on how to choose foods. So when we look at the food guide, and we talked about it just briefly there around um, you know, what foods, here's the kind of guidelines in, in terms of advice. Enjoy a variety of foods from each group each day. Limit the salt, limit the alcohol, limit the caffeine. I'm not convinced about the caffeine. Choose, excuse me, choose lower fat foods more often. Um, choose whole grain and enriched products more often. You're going to see the more often a fair bit. It's not saying that you have to give up all other foods that aren't good for us. They just mean balance. In fact, balance towards healthy food alternatives. Sure, you can dabble in less healthy things from time to time. Choose dark green and orange vegetables and orange fruit more often. And then look at choosing low-fat milk products more often. Now, you can get this stuff from low-fat milks, which you, know, you can certainly you know, get. Um, we can get it from kefir, we can get it from yogurts. Choose leaner meats, poultry, uh, fish, as well as dried peas, beans, and lentils more often. A vegetarian chili, very filling and very good for us. The number of servings that you need every day depends on your age, your sex, your body size, your activity level, and if you're pregnant or breastfeeding. So let's begin with fruits and vegetables. Adult women, seven to eight servings a day. Adult men, eight to 10 servings a day. Now fruits and vegetables provide crucial vitamins, such as A and C and minerals like iron and magnesium. Um, crucifers, these are, these are vegetables like um, winter squash, uh, carrots, broccoli, cabbage, uh, cauliflower, and they're high in fiber, rich in vitamins, and an excellent source of indoles, which are chemicals that help lower cancer risks. Fruit are excellent sources of vitamins and minerals, and fibers and may, and that may protect us against certain cancers. If we look at grain products, adult women, six to seven servings per day, and adult men, seven servings a day. And we can get this from breads, some cereals, rice, and pasta, which are the foundations of healthy diets because they're a good source of complex carbohydrates. And there it is again, healthy and complex, not the simple ones. Now, both simple and complex carbohydrates, starches, have four calories per gram. Milk and alternatives, well, adults, two servings. Uh, women who are breastfeeding and are pregnant, up to three to four servings per day. Now, we can get this out of milk, yogurt, cheese, that are high in calcium, riboflavin, protein, and vitamin A and B12. Dairy products such as milk, yogurt, kefir, are all the best calcium sources that we can you know, put into our body. And as we might be aware, lactose intolerance, or the inability to digest milk products, is a growing concern. Uh, in today's societies, uh, particularly when this is the biggest form of um, some vitamins and certainly calcium that we might be receiving. Meat alternatives, adult men and women, sorry, adult women, two servings a day, adult men, three. We can get this from meat, poultry, fish, tofu, which is soya based, dry beans, lentils, soya beans, kidney beans, black beans, all the kinds of great beans and nuts. Now for the best protein, choose the leanest meats and either broil or roast the meat, then the fats drip out and are away from the meat. If you're gonna be cooking meat, trim the visible fat off it. Um, uh, cook food in stews where you boil the meat first, or make a soup stock where you're adding um, meats and vegetables, boiling them for several hours, and then taking those elements out, preserving the meat to put back into the soup later. But take the stock and put it in the refrigerator and leave it there overnight. 
the fat will congeal to the top and make, become solid, where you can pick it off and make your stock much more fat free. Um, excuse me. Watch out for the processed chicken and turkey products, which because they're processed and they want to last long and the producers want to make sure it tastes really good and they may be high in fat, as much as 45 to 90% fat. So watch out. Oils and fats, well a small amount of unsaturated fat, about 30 to 40 milliliters or two to three tablespoons can be included each day. Choose margarines low in saturated and trans fats and limit intake to butter, margarine, and lard and short, and it says limit, it doesn't mean exclude, okay? Now nutritional supplements, now this has always been a bit of a, an area of contention in North America and in Canada too. Prior to January 1st, 2004, the Natural Health Products, NHP, defined as vitamins, minerals, herbal remedies, homeopathic medicines, traditional medicines, probiotics and other products like amino acids and essential fatty acids were sold as either food or drug. Under the um, he, um, natural health product regulations, all natural health products such as vitamins and minerals must have a special product license before they are sold and facilities that manufacture the package, a uh, manufacture package and label and import these products must also have a site license. So make sure you check to see it ensures for your own health and safety that you do. Vitamins and minerals. Minerals, uh, sorry, vitamins help put proteins, fats, and carbohydrates to use and are essential to regulating growth, maintaining tissue, releasing energy from foods. The body produces some vitamins such as vitamin D, the other vitamins must be ingested and some are soluble and some are water soluble. So sorry, some are fat soluble and others are water soluble. Minerals help build bones and teeth and in muscle function and help the nervous system transmit messages. Vitamins and minerals are sometimes recommended for certain individuals to be augmented. Now a couple of other substances in food that we could be aware of. Antioxidants. These are substances that prevent the harmful effect caused by oxidation within the body. They include vitamin C, and vitamin E, and beta-carotene, as well as compounds like um, caro, caro, carotenoids or flavonoids, sorry about that. Diets high in antioxidant rich uh, fruits and vegetables have been linked to lower rates of esophageal, lung, colon, and stomach cancer. The other term that may be referencing to some degree would be the phytochemicals. Phytochemicals are compounds that exist naturally in plants and have served many uh, functions uh, such as helping the plant protect itself from bacteria and disease. Its application in you know, human diets, well, they're associated with reduced risks of heart disease and certain cancers, age-related macular degenerative adult onset diabetes, stroke, and other diseases. So it has some benefits, but the research has yet to show a cause and effect relationship between the consumption of phytochemicals and the prevention of specific diseases. And I think in a lot of cases we have to keep an eye very closely on claims and what are um, uh, investigated and cause and effect claims. Now the last thing we'll touch on is looking at dietary reference intakes. Recommendations that are called dietary reference intakes, DRIs, replace the 1990 recommended nutrition intakes, the RNIs. The RNIs are out the DRIs are in, and that's, this applies to Canada. It's important that, uh, to note that the DRIs, which is the new term, are standards for um, appropriately healthy people and are not meant to be applied to anyone with an acute or chronic disease. Dietary reference intakes is a, sort of an umbrella term that's used to describe five different types of reference values. Now. I'll go through them, but you're going to find these on page 121 for more definitions. Now you're going to find that there's an estimated average requirements, EAR, recommended dietary allowance, the RDA, adequate intake levels, which would be AL, tolerable upper intake levels, which are 
uh, UL's and the acceptable macronutrient distribution range, AMDR. And like I said, they're on page 121 uh, for further clarification of what those mean. But these are different ways of measuring our intakes for dietary intakes. A nutritionalist would have access to this and would be able to give you more information as well. So there we are, part one, complete. We've gone through the uh, overview of the cannabis food guide requirements. Okay, part two, that's in week three as well. Good luck everybody, keep up the good work.